Hey everybody, you, you beloved, in the beloved, you who love the Lord with all of your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And I know you're loving your neighbor the way you love yourself. And you're going to love the brethren the way Jesus did. And that's a high calling. That's why Paul calls this a high calling. You were called to develop a love personality ASAP. Anything, anything other than that is going to cause problems. Chastening and etc. Now we're looking at beauty, heaven. This is the last video of the day for me. It's getting a little too hot in here for me. Uh, I use I don't use AC that much at all, uh, and of course the electric companies in the United States are really raising their their ante up on paying the bills. And uh, another reason why we're groaning here, as Paul said, we're groaning here. This this is getting ugly in the United States. They didn't have baby formula here for babies here. This country is not what it used to be at all. A lot of people who are in charge, they're not in charge. This is Jeremiah with New Covenant. Jeremiah Michael Pearson, 2022. You're looking at playlist number seven now, and uh, I'll enumerate the video. Uh, we're bouncing around a little bit, but it's good to bounce around. Long as you're bouncing around on Christ, the solid rock I stand. We're not on sinking sand here at all. This is all... Uh, 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 Pillars and a floor, a mesa. The Bible says that the earth is established on pillars. And it, and, and it will not be moved. It's not going to move. I turn the web on, they, 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 they show some sort of ball spinning or whatever. It has nothing to do with the Bible. It's people's imagination. That's all it is. If the Bible says the earth will never be moved, it will never be moved. I don't care how many people out there. And furthermore, do you put a spinning ball on pillars? No. Nobody in their right mind would put a spinning ball on pillars. All pillars throughout time have, have been used for mesas, floors. Let's get back into this. We left off on 21.9. We greet you in the only name given, lifting up hearts and hands and voices, listening for Gabriel's horn to get out of here. In a moment, in, a twinkling, in the, twinkling, the twinkling of an eye, we want to get out of here. The idea of being around people who are caring and honest and loving, and, and, and they love the truth, for eternity is awfully exciting. Because we're like, we're like Custer here in his last stand. Uh, the, the, the Indians have repeater rifles, and we're going down. Pardon me, that was some refreshing soda there. Some sugar water. Now, let me give thanks for the sugar water in Jesus' name. Amen. God is gracious and compassionate, and He gives drink to those who seek after righteousness. Let's go. And there came, they came unto me, one of the seven. We just went through that. Next verse, 10. And He carried me away in the Spirit. In a to a great and high mountain and showed me that great city the holy Jerusalem descending out of heaven from God that's our second reference to the city so John is seeing he's seeing New Jerusalem descend two times this is the second time now this time he's being an angel, one of the angels who was in charge of the seven vials. 
which are the wrath of God poured upon creatures at the end of the tribulation period. Because we have a, we have a gathering of Christians in the 15th chapter And we have a gathering of Christians in the, that would be the seventh. And we serve him night and day. So you have, you have two basic gatherings. Oh, my light's acting up. Hold on. We have two basic gatherings. Revelation 7. And, of course, Revelation 15. Now, the gathering, which is probably the third gathering in the book, is Revelation 19. And that is for, quite obvious, for the last end of the, end of the whole seven years, which is the Battle of Armageddon, in the Valley of Megiddo. So that's what we have going on there. Three basic gatherings, a lot of speculation amongst Bible teachers as to what's going on in all three of them. But to me it's quite obvious that the third one, the third gathering, that is the, that is the last and the end of the tribulation period, and the Lord is going to come down. And that's going to be the end, basically, of all evil for eternity. Only one evil thing is going to happen after the Battle of Armageddon, and that's the people are going to gather together again, nations, and they're going to try to come against God, the Lord Jesus Christ, at the end of the 1,000-year millennium. Okay? Back to 21, John is seeing the city again. And that is the focal point of this chapter. The focal point of this chapter is the beauty of heaven. And, and the entire playlist here, because home is a big deal. Where you're going and who's there is not a minor issue. Let's get going. So having the glory of God... And her light was like unto a stone most precious, even like a jasper stone, clear as crystal. So you're looking at a lot of crystal here. You're looking at some sort of gem uh, illumination. And the light, the source of the light, is the being of Big Daddy. Mr. Magnificent. Father is creating this light. Very significant. Twelve. And had a wall great and high, and had twelve gates, and at the gates twelve angels, and names written thereon, which are the names of the twelve tribes of the children of Israel. Now, I've been through some of this before. I'm going to go over it again. On the east, three gates. On the north, three gates. On the south, three gates. And on the west, three gates. And the wall of the, wall of the city had 12 foundations, and in them the name of the 12 apostles of the Lamb. And he that talked with me had a golden reed to measure the city, and the gates thereof, and the wall thereof. So now we're looking at measuring the city which uh, I gave a guesstimation. I'll give another one. Uh, it's probably about the size of maybe Texas or... I don't know. I, 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 I'll give you some specific numbers. Probably Texas and New Mexico, and you might add Missouri or something. Or you know, it's, it's, it's rather large. Sounds like Australia kind of to me or something like that. We'll get into that later. And, of course, we have 12 layers of gems that are very beautiful, obviously. And they have a different color to them and a different shine. 
and those colors have in that layer the names of the apostles. And they'll probably be Peter, James, and John will probably be your first three foundations. They're the ones who came to the human beings and saved them so they could come to the city. Now the 12 tribes of Israel are the first chosen people and of course their names are going to be at the gates. Okay. Twelve angels, twelve gates. So this sounds very interesting. Uh, what the angels are doing there, I have no idea. I, I don't know what the, there's a lot of speculation here. And we're going to read this and, and, and take our time on this and think about twelve angels. Now, what's interesting is there's only each north, south, east, and west entrance are related to three gates. Now, each gate Let's, let's say that. So the wall and the wall of the city had 12 foundations. So that's very interesting that we're going to look at 12 different layers of gems for eternity. You may as well get used to looking at gems. But evidently, it's easy to conclude that Big Daddy, Father, who I know you love dearly, and, and we love Father, that I know that you're going to enjoy his style. He, he's giving us what he wants. And that's a lot of crystal and a lot of gold and a lot of shining. Uh, it sounds awfully spectacular. It's big, so it's magnificent. There's color, so there's splendor. It's fantastic because we don't fully understand what it is. It's surprising. It's wonderful because what the heck, how did you do it? And we're marveling at the whole thing. The whole big city here. And the city lies at four square, which means it's a square, and the length is as large as the breadth. And he measured the city with a reed, 12,000 furlongs, the length and the breadth and the height of it are equal. So you figure if you go to the horse race and you've got a, a six furlong race, you're going to have to do some multiplying. That's a fur piece. I'll do the math later. I'll make a quick guess of it. I'm going to say 5,000 miles so you're looking at much more than Texas. I, I originally came up with Texas and so forth, but you're, you're looking at, uh, I, 
would say you're looking at about the same mileage. Well, let's do some math later. And he measured the wall thereof as 144 cubits according to the measure of a man, that is, of the angel. So, now the earth probably has 24,000, it's probably 24,000 miles wide. I'm talking about the real earth, not what you saw on TV. That's not science. I'm going to say that Father is probably 24,000 miles directly above your head if you're in the center of the plateau here, which is probably Africa or somewhere. If you look straight up from the North Star, let's let the math go for now. I would say the North Star is 20, 12,000 miles above your head, and Father is 24,000 miles above your head. So this new city is halfway to heaven, as far as how tall it is. Uh, so I would say that heaven and earth are one big giant can a canister. So you'd have to find the area of a can and do do that do that map. I'm not gonna get into that right now. So let's keep going. And the foundations of the wall let's go to verse uh, eighteen. And the building of the wall of it was of jasper. And the city was pure gold un, unto, clear, unto clear glass. So Father likes glass big time. We can come to that conclusion, done deal. Crystal, a city, plants, Agriculture surrounded by crystal glass is what we're envisioning here. And that's pretty pretty much solid. Now we're looking at a garnishing. Now, a garnish is different than the walls themselves. Because our first look from John was... We had 12 levels of gemstone. Obviously very bright and beautiful, having probably different colors, like a rainbow and so forth. Now, our first look at these levels, or this strata, Uh, 12 gates, the wall of the city had 12 foundations. Stop right there. Now that makes it seem like we have a solid wall of gems. However, John changes his tune here in this beautiful city we're going, we're going to, we're going to hang out with eternally. He says here, that the wall of the city were garnished with all manner of precious stones. Now we get a different look. This creates a different scenario. I, I, I'm just speculating because this is where I park for the rest of my life in my Bible study as a Bible teacher. I'm here to tell you now that I will go over this at least three or four times. I will try to bring out some different scientific facts, colors, gemstones, 
but th this is home now because this is where we're going. I want to think about this a lot. That's my point. This is where we are, where we're going, and where we're staying. I have lots of lessons here on, uh, I'm going to Romans right now, three, and I decided to go three, four, five, maybe, uh, three and four, then we have, I'm also in Psalm right now, the book of Psalms, uh, where, I'm on number three and four now. We're in Proverbs 3 and 4, we're Isaiah 2 and 3, I, I, I don't know exactly where I am on those, I, I, I'm, I'm shuffling around a little bit there, but that's what we're reading, we're all over the place. But this is home here, this is where we park and we take our time. I'm not taking my time going through Psalms at this time, but I will stop and go into Grace, Mercy and Peace. which is a fantastic four here. Playlist number four, I will isolate what grace, mercy, and peace mean. As David and his buddies, they go through these ideas a lot. We'll just continue to enjoy going through the Bible and enjoying it. I've got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart to stay. And this truth is going to bring you joy. The first book of this, the first chapter of this book says, you're blessed when you read this stuff. The, the word blessed basically means delighted. Uh, the Greek word is eulogia, meaning good words, true words, intellectual words. Uplifting words, inflating words, that's what eulogia means. There's nothing like hearing some good words from somebody, especially Big Daddy here. Dada. We're going to shut down. I don't, I don't want too much. Less with the fan on. Uh, I don't want to drag you into this fan. We're gonna we're gonna teach without. The, we're gonna shorten our lesson with the fan. So relax. Think about the word you've just been. Uh, it's been revealed to you. One more quick. Pardon me. I drink 7-Up because it's number 7. This is playlist number 7. God deals with 7s. And number 1 is 8. And that's 8 right here in chapter 21. That's number 8 right there. I make all things new. Number 8. Numerology. Jeremiah's going to shut down, and I've enjoyed this immensely. This is the best part of... I enjoy teaching other things. Uh, I, I'm really enjoying going through the Bible uh, right now. And you'll see those videos up under these uh, playlists. A little bit of a challenge with Romans, organizing Paul's comparison to grace and law. How do you teach grace and law? Grace means you're saved by not performing the law perfectly. That's what it means. How do you explain that? Well, Paul, Paul goes into detail and he, he gives you a few brain twisters and uh, I'll, I'll organize that for you. And of course, I'm not going to do it by myself. I need Big Daddy. I need our precious Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to take me along the journey. 
I'm no whiz kid. I, I, I'm just Joe who likes to go. That's me. Or Joseph. More properly stated. Let's get going. Now, that's it for now. We'll come back to this description of where you're going, what the walls look like. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about some of this. Uh, I watched a gentleman, a Bible teacher, who, was, who I used to uh, see quite a bit in Southern California, uh, Dr. Misra. I used to see him a lot. Some of these doctors, they went to the church, and they have different ministries online. And a lot of them are very, very popular. Uh, I, I may never get very popular. I, I have a couple of people who appear to be devoted. Uh, you know, they really enjoy the lessons. And, 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 and uh, as long as I have a few people who are rejoicing, I don't need a lot of people. I don't... Uh, every person is precious. So uh, every person has a name. Uh, Paul said to greet everyone by name if you're a Bible teacher. To greet everyone by name means you should never have a gigantic church. I don't agree with that. But it's, that's between them and the Lord. Okay, we're shutting down. We're rejoicing in all of this deep Bible study. We're slowing down a bit because we're getting to the, the, the good stuff of what beauty actually is. And I will come back to this and I'll talk about these gemstones. I'm going through the book of Revelation again. Uh, for those of you interested, that will be available. Um, and I have to go through it one more time, but, but the, the final time will be in reference to Daniel and the uh, Ezekiel 38 references and how they connect to the timeline of the entire book. Because the first... The first three chapters are pre-rapture. Chapters 4 to 20 are the tribulation period. Chapters 21 and 22 are number 8 on the Richter scale. This is all new here. The previous chapters are the shaking of Jacob and the punishment of the wicked and so forth. Also, to me, it's quite obvious that the early part of the tribulation period in this book refers to what? The people who missed, who missed the rapture, whether they were in the church or out of the church, they missed. They're going to have to face the new powers that the Lord is allowing to, to get in power. The Bible says, and power was given to the beast, so that he that restraineth the Holy Spirit is keeping the devil down. But he that restraineth is going to stop restraining. They're going to have a lot of power economically and politically and militarily. The head leaders, the oligarchy, which is the beast, and his seven heads and the leaders of the world and there's going to be a lot of blasphemy going on and the leaders are going to come and come on television and so forth and they're going to say that they're basically God. And then they're going to start speaking against the one we love dearly. Jesus Christ, obviously. Repeated a couple times in this book, number 66. And of course, we who love the Lord wake up every morning seeking to please Him every day. We would never even begin to deny Him or give our devotion and kneel to anyone else but the one we love, Jesus Christ. And that's why we know the tribulation period is not for Christians who are on fire because if you told them to uh, uh, worship some beast or something, they would laugh at you. They say, you want me to do what? <laughs> Come on.
I'm going to worship a filthy looking beast. You better get Jesus up in here, as they say nowadays. And then we'll get some worship going on. Then we'll kneel before the Lord our God, our Maker. Okay, okay, you, 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 you bring Jesus Christ in here, and we'll kneel down to Him and and tell Him we love Him before you can say snap, crackle, pop. But as far as this beast and the image or whatever, uh, you know, get lost. Oh, but we're gonna chop your head off. Well, you, you may as well get to chopping. We all die anyway. You can have a whole wide world. Uh, I had a relative tell me the other day that the Chinese are taking over. I told him, let them take it over. I don't want them to take it over. Uh, no. But as long as they don't take Jesus, take everything. My house, my car, whatever you want. Take the government, take the water, you know, whatever you take, the Lord's going to probably provide back again because all that I needed, thy hand hath provided. Great is God's trustworthiness. So I don't have to worry about trusting in Him for anything you take. So you do what you're going to do, just leave the master alone you know we're, we're like peter over here we got a sword and we're, we're ready to chop off somebody's ear we're not going to live by the sword but we're, we're ready to use it if there's anybody around here who we're, we're willing to go down for it's the master snap crackle pop You dare me to tell you that I love Jesus Christ? Have you lost your mind? The people on fire for Jesus Christ, they'll jump up and down and tell you whether they're going into the fire, like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, or some guillotine or whatever. They're, they're going to say, let's get the ball rolling. Shut your trap and do what you got to do. You devil, or whoever it is. You Illuminati flunky, you know, or whatever. One moment. That sugar water. That sugar water is cooling me off. We need some liquids in this heat. Jeremiah's done. He is on fire. I just wanted to share with you that, you know what, when you get the fire of the Lord, it's not your fire, it's His. And you go out and do all kind of bold things. You know that you wouldn't do because that's the power of the Lord. To, to John said in his first, since we're talking about Johnny here, or John, in, in, in his in his gospel, the first chapter, he said to them he gave power to be the sons of God and the children of God. I got power to do what I do. This is the force, and it's in me. The real force, and I know you've got it too. The devil's not going to waste his time uh, uh, coming to Christians who are on fire to, 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 to make some sort of challenge to their to their love of the master. They're going to start jumping up and down. Because absent from the body is present with the Lord. So snap, crackle, pop. Do what you got to do. If China comes, come China. Do what you got to do. Whatever the Lord allows you to do, take this. Don't touch the master because all eyes are fixed on him and everybody's looking at him everybody's putting all of their eggs in his basket and all they want to think about is is the master's love all day all night angels watching over me my lord you know that's all we do that's all we do around here You're not going to challenge somebody who's on fire for Jesus Christ, who wants to be with Jesus Christ uh, in terms of suffering or something. But they're, going to, they're going to jump up and down. Matthew chapter 5. Rejoice, be exceedingly glad, 
for so they did the prophets who were before you. So if you want to come and get me or whatever, all this stuff, you know, you, you do what you got to do. But he who laughs last, laughs best. Let's put it that way. I told a friend of mine, he said his parents abused him with, with, his, with his relatives, with his, with, uh, with his uh, the inheritance and all of that. I said, I said, you know what? If you were, if you were in the right, they're going to come down and kneel at your feet, so to speak, and you can count on it. Because what goes around comes around. The innocent person will always stand over the guilty one. I guarantee. It may take a while. Okay, you in the valley. Uh, God's got you in the valley. But wait, what he's going to do is he's going to make the valley stand over the mountain. That's what he's going to do. That's what John just did right here in Revelation 21. John's in jail. He's in a prison. He's obviously having a very difficult time. He doesn't want to talk about it, but he says he's having tribulation. And that, uh, that's a nice way for a man to say, this is hurting over here for certain. And, uh, but look where he's going. He, he's, in, he's in prison. It probably stinks, but he's going to a mountain. That's how it goes. You want to go to the mountain? Eat living bread. Playlist number 11. Baptized with him. So you can raise, well, you can be risen with him. Christianity is essentially baptism. That's what it is. When you got when you got baptized, or you do get baptized in the future, that, that's essentially what your life is. Well, baptism wasn't what I got baptized, it's all over with. No, that's called wrong answer. The Bible says in Acts that repentance is baptism. It's, it's the baptism of repentance, which means what that means from a simple grammatic uh, perspective is your burial was in a turn. That's what it means. You turned in a burial. The baptism of repentance. It wasn't just getting baptized where you were buried. When you turned, you were buried. Unless a seed falls in the ground, it abideth alone. We're here so that we don't abide alone. I don't want to abide alone. You want, to, you want to abide away from Jesus Christ? I don't want to. I want to learn to serve the Lord and to please Him and so that I don't want to abide alone. I want to hang out with the Master. Therefore, I'm going to put on my cross daily and I'm going to bear the cross. Put it on and bear it. That's what Christianity is in a nutshell. Jeremiah's done. We'll come back to uh, uh, Revelation 21. This is a kickback kind of apostolic time for me. Um, I have some structure to work on. Uh, I'll, I'll let it go with that. that organizing Paul's uh, grace versus uh, law uh, uh, scriptures. Um, I'm very happy with the progress, but I'm not done. Uh, Peter said it's a little difficult. That's right, Peter. But you can get it organized. I'll, I'll organize that for you, those of you who are following along. And I'll, I'll put that in the uh, in the uh, all ages category too. Beauty's going into 2022. Uh, Romans and uh, what, what I'm doing, I'm putting in. Uh, well, we'll talk about that later. We're going to shut down. Maranatha, Corinthians 16. Listening to the voice of the Lord. My sheep, they hear my voice. And I call them and they follow. He leadeth me in green pastures. In pastures of green. He leadeth me beside the quiet waters. He restoreth my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness. For his name's purposes. So that his name is blown up. It's legitimized. You're, what you do is legitimized by the volume of work you do. If you wash two cars, you're, you are a, you work in a car wash. If you wash 2,000 cars, 
you're really uh, working in a car wash. If you're a barber and you cut two heads, you're a barber. But if you're a barber and you cut 2,000 heads, your name is big. Based upon the facts of you functioning as a barber. The Lord's name is God saves. The Lord Jesus Christ loves to save. He loves to get people who are lost and bring them into the kingdom. He loves to do that. He, he wants to do that. He can't make people come, but he is coercing and he is yelling in the streets. As Solomon said, we're yelling in the streets here. I'm wisdom. Come over here. That's it. We're shutting down. Rejoicing in the Lord. Surrounded by Bible study everywhere. Here. And that's the way it is every day here. Um, I'm, I'm loading, loading some music up uh, in a couple days. Uh, my own music, you can listen to it. A lot of nice, clean, analog music there. I'd rather you not use it because I might sell it down the road, okay? Just go to my uh, channel and just click the videos and let, and let, let the music play. Some of the music I'm very happy with. It sounds really nice and clean. Very little noise. That's it. Jeremiah's done. Shalom and Maranatha. The Lord is coming. Listening to the horn of Gabriel and the voice of the Lord. Maranatha, again. <clears throat>